Hi everyone, try as I might, I can't stop making every other game using a different engine or library. For this video I made my first game in Godot and I've come to like the engine very much, though there's still some small problems I had. I was originally planning to try to learn Unity, but I gave Godot a try and I'm happy about my choice. So in this video I will showcase uh, the uh, game when it's already done, I'm gonna show what I what I did. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be a step by step. Uh, we have a game scene which has a tile map. All uh, this uh, the background basically and the the path. Uh, I created the path to the with different points and I want the uh, I, f I forgot to mention this is a tower defense game but you probably noticed from the the way the game looks. The enemies will follow this uh, set path, so the enemies will be a path to D follow. They're going to be ch children of this path to D. Some GUI elements for the coins and for the heart. Uh, my focus was very much on composition and using components. So if we visit this enemy scene. Uh, this is uh, like a, a parent scene. The uh, we have two types of enemies. First, first of all, a slime and an orc, and both both of them inherit from the from the enemy. Uh, they have a move component, uh, which goes. It's it's it, the enemy has it, and the orc and slime use it. So for, for all the components. Uh, they're going to be shared among uh, the slime and orc, so it's it's very efficient and very easy to expand if you work this way with components. I have a stat component which uh, has help, the health of the enemy and the damage it does if it passes. Uh, an on-screen on notifier uh, if the enemy exits. A hurt box component. Uh, this is basically the hurt box of the enemy and the hurt component which needs to gather the stats and the hurt box. Uh, we also see that the uh, stats has a no health signal. Uh, and uh, the enemy, here is the enemy script, you can see some parts of it. When it has no health, it plays a death animation, uh, disables its collision, stops moving, and I have a global uh, variable on events and here you can signal that uh, we're gonna see later the uh, tower requests an upgrade it needs to check if there's enough money to, to do an upgrade an enemy passes the finishes the the map exits the map or an enemy dies uh, and then we uh, for the slime for example uh, we have a walk animation should maybe disable this. Uh, I gave it three movement speed. And I meant to do that. I gave it two health and one damage. And the collision shape. Uh, the orc is very similar. It has uh, four speed and uh, five HP, two damage. Uh, so as, as as I was saying, it's easy to to expand uh, when you use components, and it's easy you you make your life easier because uh, all all this stuff in yellow is inherited from the parents. So here in the slime, I just put the speed to three, and here in the uh, orc, I, sp I put the speed to four, and it uses the same script. I don't need to write for the slime and for the orc the same thing. Um. Uh, here is the game script I didn't want to get here quite yet. Uh, there's a lot of components. Uh, next up I'm going to show a tower. It just has a sprite and then a tower place. Uh, you, you could see this in the, in the beginning. This tower uh, space is an upgrade component. So this upgrade component wants to know its parent, the tower which it upgrades to, for the case of the tower place, the upgrade is Archer Tower 1, and for Archer Tower 1, the upgrade is Archer Tower 2. 
the cost uh, and the button and the hover area for the GUI. These are GUI related. Uh, and then if we go to Azure Tower One, it also has an upgrade component with its own stuff, but it also has a shoot component. Uh, for the shoot component, you need an area 2D with um, a collision. This is this in the red is the shoot area, and a shoot marker where the arrows come out from. And the shoot component needs the tower, the shoot area, shoot cooldown, the projectile it's shooting, and the shoot marker. So keep in mind the projectiles for now. Archer Tower 2 is very similar to to Archer Tower 1, ex except it doesn't have an upgrade component because it's the last level and it has just shoots faster, it has a smaller uh, shoot cooldown. So I was talking about projectiles, the <clears throat> the tower shoot projectile. So projectile is also like a parent scene. I have a component for uh, that moves the projectile uh, based on its rotation and it has a range, speed, a hitbox with uh, its damage. So if you go to arrow, <clears throat> first of all I give uh, a texture, the sprite. Here you can give whatever speed and whatever range you want to and you need to give it a collision shape. <clears throat> so if you wanted to create a new project projectile, let's say new inherited scene, uh, let, name it fireball, we would save it. Uh, here in the Sprite 2D, would give it a new texture. A new texture for the move component. Let's say you want to move it 500. Uh, it has a max uh, range of 500 tiles and a speed of 300, and it does uh, let's say three damage. So and, th and that's all you need to do to create a new projectile. Once, once you set the base for the parent class, you can very quickly uh, create new stuff. Now in the script for the for the game, uh, we link up the events from the global variable events to different factions. I also have uh, updated the coins count and the health amount, and uh, handle the spawn on a set timer. Um, the the spawning of the enemies gets faster. Uh, the the more enemies spawn, so with time the the more there are more enemies spawning, so there's a degree of difficulty, of increasing difficulty. And if I run now, this is how the game over scene would look like. I can try to run the current scene. So quit button takes you out. I didn't really go into the details of what happened. So, for example, you could see that uh, for the tower, a button appeared uh, every time uh, you hovered in. You can see that with the blue, this is like the the, the area you, you have to hover over for the button to spawn. Uh, and here for the upgrade component, uh, I give. This is it's not quite. Uh, I think it's not quite a, a good solution I found, but it. Uh, I think it's, it's 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 the best I could do. I couldn't really figure out a better way, because uh, for it to be good, I wanted to integrate the the button and the hover area in the upgrade component, but uh, there's some problems I couldn't uh, fix with that. And. Uh, the problem with the projectile that I was speaking about is that uh, I don't know if I I, I think I showed the, the the arrow in the projectile move component. Uh, I rotate based on the rotation, okay. And when I create a projectile, let's see here in the shoot component. Uh, we have a shoot timer, some uh, some shooting. Here I check all the enemies in the shoot area and I sort them by how far along they are on the path. Because uh, that is, makes sense to shoot the, like the first enemy, not the closest one, because sometimes if, if an enemy gets past, you don't want to, to let him 
go and shoot the closest one to you. Uh, the problem is that uh, for the rotation, I need to add a, like a, a small bias. If I don't do this, the shot is way off. Uh, I try to figure out the direction from the shoot marker to the to the global position of the target enemy. This doesn't quite work. It the first tower. It depends on on the angle the enemy is coming at. Sometimes the shots are, are good. Sometimes they are just a bit off. But if I remove this bias, uh, it's it's way off. The it's not shooting right at all. And I'm not sure what the problem is there. But uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I'm not sure what else there is to showcase. Uh, you can see the amount of components I need to do for I need, I need to create for this small project. We have a hitbox component for the projectiles, a horde box component for the uh, enemies. And speaking of hitboxes and horde boxes, it's very important to uh, this project I separated uh, into coll physics collision layer. Uh, yes, coll collision layers. I can find an enemy herbox component. It's on the first layer and uh, and uh, projectiles. They uh, they have mask on the first layer, so they can hit the enemies. And also the tower range. They also have the mask set to one. Uh, coming back to components, we have a herd component. As I, as I said, it links together the stats component, which has HP and damage to the herbox component. So basically, when it gets hit by an arrow, its health goes down. We have a move component for the enemies that moves the enemies along the the path. A projectile move component. A shoot component for the tower that I showcased. A stats with the health and damage. And an upgrade component, which is uh, not quite perfect. Uh, here we, we can see that... Uh, when I press a button, it uh, signals the event uh, that there is a re request upgrade. It uh, gives it the cost of the upgrade and uh, the function that it should call if the upgrade should take place. If I... If, does this open? Yes. Uh, I think this is in the game. When there is a request upgrade uh, call a signal from the events, it checks if there is enough money, it uh, uh, deducts, it uh, deducts the amount needed to, for the upgrade and then calls the upgrade function for that given tower. So I think that's about it. I didn't go into every detail. It also wasn't a step-by-step um, tutorial was most more of a showcase. Uh, this was, as I said, my first game in Godot. I uh, watched like a few tutorials, which taught me a lot of things. Then I then I decided to create a game that was, uh, well, uh, something where you need to do more than you see in the tutorials because if you just keep copying tutorials you'll, you'll progress very slowly you need to to work uh, yourself on, on a project it still has a, a small amount of problems and it's not not a very complex game uh it should it should have more towers more enemies and like a wave system probably uh that's about it don't forget to Subscribe if you want to, leave a like if you want to, leave a comment if you want to see something, a tutorial or, or something, or a, if you want me to create a game, leave me a suggestion, leave me a complaint. Uh, that's about it. Thank you and see you.